at uh, this. Okay, got it. Now let's. Uh... Hello there. Now, does everyone see the uh, the screen? Am I okay here, Alex? Yes, you are. Yeah, you see the okay. screen. All right. So, um, as part of my endeavors, uh, doing a follow up book uh, to uh, this old canoe, um, the the whole thing was to to uh, talk about the restoration of features that uh, are, um, for want of a better word, fancy. So um, upswept decks and, and um, external stems and, and all of that sort of thing, uh, long decks and what have you. And so uh, all of that is uh, described in the second book, which will be uh, coming out this summer. And uh, it's called This Fancy Old Canoe. And uh, so as part of that, I needed to get a hold of uh, a number of canoes with uh, fancy features. And one of them uh, was a, a 1967 Old Town Otka sailing canoe uh, with uh, sponsons. And uh, so uh, this uh, talk will be... Uh, Let's see here. There. We'll be uh, talking about the uh, process of repairing uh, the rotten ends of a canoe, uh, repairing and replacing, recanvassing sponsons, uh, re replacing and, and repairing uh, keel and uh, an external uh, external stems on a canoe, and then the final assembly, uh, followed by um, the application of decals and uh, any hand painted, um, you know, features, uh, a name or what have you. On this particular one, the uh, all of all of the canoes in in this uh, collection uh, at uh, the summer camp in uh, in uh, Idaho. Um, were all named. So uh, they wanted a hand-painted name on the canoe. And uh, finally, will be a, a little bit of a showtime with some uh, pictures of the completed canoe. So, uh, so let's, uh, let's get into it. Um, first of all, uh, end repairs. And, and uh, it's the, uh, the one thing that almost always uh, is found is a rot in the ends. So uh, in this particular one, um, the, uh, there was uh, some rot in the ends. And so uh, the, um, the Old Town Otka has uh, upswept ends, which means that everything in the end, the decks, the in whales, the out whales, the stems, everything is bent and needs to be um, uh, steam bent. All the new wood has to be steam bent to to uh, fit the uh, the profile uh, of the original. And so that means uh, taking a, a template um, with a piece of cardboard to just mark off a, a the shape of the uh, of the end, transfer that onto some. Uh, some uh, two by sixes to make uh, to make some bending forms and allow for uh, for any spring back in the in the wood as well. So here's the uh, the bending form for the uh, for the ends for the uh, the in whales and the out whales and uh, and then once the the uh, wood is soaked and then then uh, steamed and and put onto the bending form left for a four or five six seven days um it comes off and of course you can see that that the uh, the wood springs back quite substantially 
And so all of that has to be taken into account uh, when you're building a, a bending form. So uh, we uh, cut off the, the rotten uh, sections, put in the, uh, the new wood, which has been pre-bent to, to replicate the, uh, the, the, uh, the original bend and uh, glue it all up and, and uh, hopefully it all, it all uh, looks exactly the same as the original. Um, the, uh, the ends of the in whales taper. Um, and uh, it's uh, again, a, another feature of these fancy canoes is tapered ends. Um, decks can often be uh, rotted, uh, sometimes just at the end. So one way to, uh, to do that is just to splice in a, a new piece of, uh, of wood and uh, and then you uh, you basically have uh, have something that you can put back in the canoe. Uh, in other cases, um, we make a, 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 an actual press um, and uh, build a, a, a form uh, again, allowing for spring back and uh, and then set it all up. I just took the scissor jack out of my car and um, and applied pressure uh, on the uh, the new wood, which was again soaked for three days, thrown into the steam box for an hour, and then um, and then uh, uh, put put into the press and left left there for four, five, six, seven days, and uh, and then everything fits, and uh, the. Um, now, <laughs> this is not my first time through, so I have a pretty good idea of what's going to work, but uh, more often than not, uh, I have to uh, adjust things and, and uh, change the, uh, the bending forms and that sort of thing to, uh, to get something that actually works. Um, the ends uh, fit in nicely. And uh, yeah, so that's that's the end. The uh, sponsons um, sponsons are float chambers. They're they're basically little canoes that are attached to the uh, to the each side of the canoe, uh, just below the gunnels. And uh, they back in the like a hundred years ago, uh, they were a feature that was added uh, to allay the fears of people who were not used to being in canoes. And they, they wanted a, a safe canoe, one that, that would not turn over. And so these, these uh, features were added. Um, the, uh, the sponsor and runs the full length uh, and uh, is quite the piece of engineering. Um, the the stations are attached at every second rib so maybe 20 centimeters apart kind of thing and uh and then longitudinal strips go the full length uh of the of the sponson and create this uh this uh, tapered uh you know beautifully shaped uh, little air chamber the ends are solid wood and uh, uh, are attached separately. It's uh, quite the process of taking this whole thing off. It, it uh, usually takes uh, two of us uh, a full day to take the, the sponsons off of a canoe. Uh, it's, um, yeah, a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, <laughs> making sure that your tongue is, is held in the right place in your cheek. Um, but uh, eventually they come off and, uh, and then the process of uh, canvassing uh, the, uh, the sponsons is to uh, uh, lay out a, a piece of canvas on one side and, uh, and then uh, actually attach the, um, the main body of the, of the sponson so that you have an idea of where the uh, each end, the solid 
uh, wooden ends will will fit as well. They have to be attached first, uh, fully. Then, uh, then the uh, the main body, which has been taken off, um, gets uh, put back on again, and uh, uh, and then the. Uh, the ends of the main body are attached to the uh, to the solid wood bodies at the end uh, of of the spots on, uh, on each end, and so it's uh, it's quite a process. Um, and uh, again, it takes two of us a, a full day to to uh, to get both sponsons on. The um, once once it's been attached, the the canvas is then. Uh, stretched um, the the original builders in the old town uh, factory would would pull the the um, the lower section up first and then the 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 top section would fold down on top of that I did it both ways uh, one uh, each side I I, I did uh, you know one way just to see if there was any difference and uh, there re really doesn't seem to be a lot of difference, although uh, doing uh, from the bottom and then then the top uh, results in a you know a little nicer finish uh, to the whole thing. So the uh, the canvas is uh, stretched out on one side, and then the uh, then the other side is brought up, and uh, everything is trimmed off. At the ends, uh, the um, the canvas is uh, you know sort of needs to be neatened up there. So uh, so we just fold everything in, tack it down, um, and make sure that all the tacks uh, go through uh, the the canvas of the on the sponsons as well as uh, right on a rib, so that everything can be clinched down and held firmly in place and then um, then everything the the entire canoe is uh, is uh, waterproofed with a canvas filler I use a, a water-based uh, latex filler that has um, uh, uh, fungicides and and that sort of thing in it um, and uh, it, it dries in a day instead of the oil-based uh, fillers which take a month or more to, to dry. Um, so uh, keels and external stems. Um, the um, a lot of the the fancy canoes will have a uh, an outside stem that that uh, is more just for show than anything else. Um, in some cases, uh, a whole new uh, outside stem has to be be a steam bent uh, right onto the canoe. Um, this is a Thompson Brothers canoe that uh, need, needed outside stems. So uh, the trick here is to get uh, usually ash that is absolutely straight grain uh, so that uh, it bends without uh, any trouble at all. Uh, once it's had a chance to fully dry, which is about a week, uh, it's uh, shaped to uh, to uh, the original uh, dimensions, um, and uh, now this is showing a, a keel making uh, making a a new keel, and uh, you'll notice here that that the the bottom surface of the both the keel and the outside stem. Uh, have a concave um, uh, feature to it, a cove on the bottom of the uh, of the of the keel and the outside stem. And uh, so the uh, the first thing that I had to do was build a jig to cut a cove uh, on my table saw. Uh, I'm sure there's there's other ways of cutting a cove, but uh, I decided to uh, to do it on the table saw by uh, running the material at an angle to the uh, to the uh, saw blade and uh, and it it ends up with a uh, with a nice uh, 
a nice curved uh, cove to the bottom of the keel. Um, these uh, on the this uh, particular canoe, the uh, the outside stems were in great shape, so they were just reattached. Um, and but the the keel was new, and uh, so it had to be fitted to uh, to come uh, uh, you know precisely in place. It had to be absolutely dead center down the uh, down the the middle of the canoe, uh, and and you'll see uh, you'll see later why that's uh, essential. Um, there's components that have to fit onto the uh, keel. So uh, um, the, uh, the taper has to be uh, set so that it uh, fits right into the, um, into the outside stems on each end. And uh, so everything is shaped and, uh, and screwed into place with all of the bedding compound and that sort of thing. Um, on the, uh, the sailing canoe, the, the, uh, the outside stems were already set up uh, at, the, at the tops uh, to accept uh, out whales. Uh, in other canoes like this Thompson Brothers canoe, um, the, uh, the top of the outside stems have to be cut to accept all of the other features. So there we have it, uh, the keel in place. Now to assemble everything, uh, there's there's lee boards, there's a, a, a rudder, uh, various uh, things. The the rudder is held in place with uh, copper rivets. So I started with a, a big common nail, a, a, a copper common nail, and uh, used a, a grinder to uh, to get it to. Uh, to fit into place, the um, the rudder is held on to the um, uh, the the stern stem with um, uh, uh, hardware pieces called gudgeons and pintles. The, the gudgeon is attached to the uh, to the canoe, and the pintles are attached to the uh, to the rudder. And uh, in this case, the uh, the copper uh, is uh, fed through and then um, uh, using a hammer and a, a backing, like, you know, a clinching iron kind of thing, a, a dolly, um, it, uh, it ends up uh, nicely rounded on, uh, on both sides and holds everything absolutely solid in place. Uh, the uh, the rudder you can see there is attached with the pintle that goes into the gudgeon and uh, holds everything in place. The uh, the uh, lee boards for the uh, for the canoe it does uh, the the uh, the uh, this particular kind of setup uh, is uh, is set for for the uh, the uh, the use in uh, in sailing, um, the uh, the mast step the the bottom of the mast has to fit uh, snugly into place and be held firmly. So uh, there's a a wooden feature called a step, and uh, uh, we just drill straight through the uh, the original holes in, in its original position, and it goes straight through the uh, the top of the um, or the middle of the of the keel and uh, and then machine screws uh, hold it all in place uh, the uh, the bow seat is set up uh, with a uh, uh, hole um, to accept the uh, mast and uh, and the the uh, the seats were uh, were all recaned as well uh, here's the, the stern seat uh, installed and uh, all, also recaned, fully recaned. Um, and then the, um, the rub rails for the um, uh, sponsons cover the, um, cover the seams of the canvas. 
and uh, and make everything look pretty. And uh, a little extension to the uh, to the uh, screwdriver uh, allows uh, allows you to reach over and and get all the screws uh, in place. The um, uh, floor rack. There's a floor rack in this particular canoe, and it's it's installed as well. Uh, so there we have it. Um, everything is assembled. Um, now we have to get uh, decals in in place and uh, a hand painted name. The uh, decals are available through the uh, WCHA in their online store. Um, and uh, it's, uh, you know, they, they give you instructions uh, for it. Um, uh, it's uh, 30 seconds in water. Uh, it's then slides off. You use a squeegee to, to get rid of any air bubbles and that sort of thing in the decal, and then allow it to dry overnight. Uh, remove a protective film on top of the decal the next day and uh, and you're you're all set to go uh the um uh sometimes uh, there's there's other decals that are vinyl and uh, they they come with a again with a, a backing uh and uh, and they're just uh, put in place uh one one little trick is to uh, to use a spray bottle that has water and a couple of drops of uh uh, dish soap. The uh, dish soap um, uh, allows you, when you uh, put the, uh, the the vinyl in place, uh, it won't stick immediately. And uh, you can you can adjust it and make sure it's in exactly the right place, and uh, then let it dry overnight. And before you then remove the uh, the backing and and have everything in place. Uh, for a hand uh, painted uh, feature, in this case a name, um, uh, I set up uh, the um, uh, outline of, of the uh, of the name, and uh, this is called a pounce wheel. It's a, a, a little tiny wheel with a, a bunch of uh, of spikes uh, that. Uh, uh, create holes in the paper that you're using as a, as a, uh, a form, a, a template. And, uh, you know, tailors and, and dressmakers and that sort of thing are, are familiar with that in, uh, in doing patterns for, for dressmaking. Uh, the, uh, the pattern is, is then attached to the canoe in the, in the place that you want. And, uh, use uh, some, in this case, baby powder, um, uh, pat it onto the, uh, onto the uh, paper. Um, the powder goes through the little holes and leaves the, uh, leaves the pattern on the canoe. Uh, I use a grease pencil then to make sure that, that, the, uh, uh, that I have the, the pattern there. Um, more permanently, uh, it will be uh, uh, wiped away afterwards with a, a little bit of uh, mineral spirits. Um, once uh, once the pattern is uh, transferred to the canoe, um, get out the um, the uh, uh, lettering brushes, and um, uh, this uh, this piece of uh, equipment here is called a mall stick. It, it keeps your uh, hand steady and away from the work surface so that you're not uh, creating any smudges or, or that sort of thing. It, it really steadies the hand out as well. And then a, a separate brush called a, an outlining brush is used to, uh, to create an outline uh, on the letters as well. And uh, and there, there you have it. Now it's uh, show time, and uh, so the um, you can see the the results of all that work on the ends uh, came out rather nicely, and 
the uh, the hand painted sign as well. Uh, there's the uh, the vinyl uh, name in place, and it uh, it uh, works very very well as uh, as well. And there it is with the uh, with the mast, the uh, the sail, and uh, lee boards and rudder all in place uh, for sailing. So that's the uh, that's the setup there. You can see the the base of the the mast fits into the uh, mast step, and um, uh, like that. Um, and there's my uh, assistant Dave. Um, it uh, it was a huge amount of work. Um, I you know the. Uh, COVID shut my shop down for about two years, but uh, the the total amount of time on the canoe was about a year to to get the uh, the whole thing uh, restored. And uh, yeah, so uh, that's it. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Mike. I appreciate that. Um, and you'll take questions if people have questions? You bet. Um, let me see, let's just, yeah. I've got one. Um, the lettering that you're doing, do you actually do that yourself or do you bring in somebody to do that? Um, in the book, I say the best way to do this is to get somebody else to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did it myself. Um, I just to to find out how difficult it was and and um, you know whether or not I could actually learn learn to do it well enough to 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 do on a canoe, and the the answer is it it takes a lot of time but but to eventually you you get to the point where your your skill level is is good enough to to do that sort of thing, it does take some practice. Okay, thanks. Hmm. Anything that stood out for people in, in the presentation? Uh, I have a question. Uh, yes. Let me get my video back on for you. Um, it's about the sponsons. Yes. And I'm wondering if you have a canoe that has sponsons, you take off those sponsons, but want to maintain the original canvas. Mm -hmm. uh, so are, how, no. many, how many holes? You can't do that. No, because no. no. how many holes would there be in that spot under the gunnels as it kind of goes across? Okay, so uh, let's say in this case it was an eighteen foot canoe. Uh, every second rib has two screws holding the holding the sponson on. So on each side there would be about what sixty eighty screws. Um, uh, attaching the 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 sponson to the canoe plus uh, five five screws again uh, holding the uh, the solid ends. Oh. So it's uh, yeah, there's it's it's um, it's a, a huge piece of engineering that, that goes into that. You're basically restoring three canoes when you're when you're doing sponsons on a canoe. I have a question, a couple of questions. Certainly. Um, it looks like it must, must add a lot to the weight. So what's the combined weight? And the second question is, is it just the regular Otka that they use when they put sponsons on or do they have a special form that accommodates them? No, uh, the, they, uh, the Old Town Canoe Company uh, used um, the Otka uh, as their sailing canoe, they would, they would then put the sponsons on to add stability to the uh, sailing canoe. So that when you're on a you know a full tack and that sort of thing, it you're not going to be upset all the time. And uh, so the the canoe without the sponsons, uh, eighteen footer weighs about what ninety pounds or so, forty five forty uh, kilos. Um, and with the sponsons, it's about 120 pounds. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, it's there's it's a lot a lot of extra weight, um, and you know, um, 
Uh, some people just leave the sponsons off. Uh, others uh, want to maintain the, the history of the canoe and that sort of thing and, and some of the, uh, the handling features for, for sailing. So they, they put the sponsons back on. I have a question about uh, canvassing those sponsons. I couldn't tell whether the boat was already canvassed. The hull was canvassed. Before you canvassed the sponsors, it was. I didn't yeah. see any tax or staples or anything. So, okay. no, no, it's uh, yeah. Uh, what I do is uh, is uh, stretch the canvas on the hull, uh, waterproof that canvas, and then put a uh, put the, uh, the the canvas for the sponsors on top of that. Oh, I see that. And mm -hmm. uh, and then then. Uh, then waterproof the sponsons and make sure that that all of the the the, the contact points the seams uh, around the sponsons are are completely sealed thanks yeah hello colin oh he's colin? you're colin is muted he can't hear me or he can't hear me. Either. I just can't hear him. All right. Anyone else have any questions for Mike? Yeah. Oh, did I miss it all? Any Anything else that stood up for people? Uh, I actually, yeah, I have another question. Um, I was wondering, Alex, can I share my screen again? I wanted to yep. get Mike's uh, opinion on a photo that I found. Sure. Um, and it had a curious build feature that I thought might have been a replacement of a sponson. So if I uh, share this with everybody, uh, I'm sure you're going to recognize the, the paddler. But I'm more curious about the boat. Oh, yes. Everyone see this? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. All right. So uh, <laughs> this was taken in 1953 in Banff um, when Marilyn was uh, filming a, a, a movie in the area. Yep, and uh, it's a closed gunnel um, boat with you know heart shaped decks, and there seems to be some add on here. But what kind of got my attention was this second strip of wood underneath the outwhale here, mm -hmm. and I was thinking, is that like where they took off a sponson and just put that on there as a cover, or why would you actually have a second strip underneath that area? Your guess is as good as mine. I. Mm -hmm. I really couldn't say. Um, it it looks like um, uh, I don't know some sort of feature that that uh, I don't know. I have no idea. It because um, closed closed gunnel boats were more or less uh, you know by the 1920s I guess <laughs> most, most books say that they were kind of out of vogue for construction. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I was wondering if this was maybe like an old closed gunnel chestnut or something like that that they just kept adding on and repairing. Uh, as a tourist boat in uh, Banff. Yeah, that, that's 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 a good guess. Um, uh, I I you know basically pegged it as a as a Peterborough, but uh, but I, it yeah. could either be a, a Peterborough or a chestnut that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I would def I would defer to Pam on this, but what I've usually seen is when the canvas starts to rot, it usually that rots. Right right the the yeah, and that's probably just a patch, wooden patch put on the. Yeah. Get a couple more years out of it. Yeah, yeah I, I think yeah. you're right. I'd say that's what it was, but it, that's what it looks like to me. Because if it was uh, Sponson's taken off, the holes would be for, further down. Yeah, oh, okay. that's yeah, right up they, the gunnels, and and you're right, bud. That's where it all rots. So they did a pretty good job, actually. I, 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 think I guess for, for for a Hollywood movie star, they just uh, whoop, whoop together a crappy old boat and uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and they they didn't they didn't have any duct tape then, so uh, so I guess yeah. you know putting a strip of wood across there keeps the the spot uh, keeps the canvas on for a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. Neat little trick. Okay, thank you. Could I possibly add something to your conversation there? Uh, my name is Andy Creed. I'm with the Shikaroa chapter in in New Hampshire. Oh, hello. The uh, the boat that you're looking at, uh, I have seen this treatment with the closed gunnels on Kennebecs, mm -hmm. which were built from about 1910 to 1930 and, and in conjunction with Old Town. Yep. Uh, and I have seen that that 
under gunnel on them. Oh. I don't know nice. if it was standard or not, but uh, okay. we're, we're actually uh, dealing with one right now that has that configuration. Hmm. Very nice. I seem to recall that the boat that Marilyn was in was a Kennebec. Remember reading that a few years back. Okay, cool. Very nice. Well, there you go. Mystery solved. Any other questions of Mike or comments? Mm -hmm. Well, Mike, thank you very, very much for your time and for a great talk. You're very welcome. Thank for you. For those of us who will make the assembly this year, we'll see you again. Okay. And, and you're launching your new book then, are you not? Yes. The, 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 this fancy old canoe is uh, just in the process of being edited. Thank you, Lee. And, um, and yeah, it's coming along. And um, yeah, expect uh, a, a nice uh, a nice event launching the book in in July at the assembly. Great. Um, I want to thank everyone that came in from that is a part of the Northern Lakes. We had a lot of people from a lot of places. Um, I really appreciate your interest in what we're doing and Mike and interest in Mike's talk. And we hope to do this again. It's real yeah. easy with Zoom to open it up to everybody and. Uh, not a bad thing to do on a cold winter's night. Mm -hmm. our, our next Northern Lakes meeting will be on February the 29th, and that'll be a planning session as we talk about different activities that we want to do, hopefully get on the water, attend some shows, and we'll see what's possible. So I'll have another note out earlier in February about that, um, but it's February the 29th, and that's a, a leap year, so something different for us. And thank you, Marat, for the summary. As always, you do a fantastic job, and we would be nowhere without you. Thanks, Alex, for putting yeah. this together. Yeah, yeah. It, it, this has been great. So thank you, everybody. Really appreciate now, your time. Just, yeah. While we have our bigger group here, may I just say I'm a bit ahead of ourselves for our planning meeting, but Marat and I were talking and you and I were talking about perhaps having a paddling session that I was thinking of calling functional flair so that we can do some coordinated pivots or side slips, things like that. And then at the Rideau Festival, we'll get all those beautiful boats out on the water because it won't be windy this year. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, so that'd be a lot of fun. Coordinated right. paddling to show off the boats. Yeah. There you go. Simple things, but that might be the first weekend in or the second weekend in May. Okay. At one of, at Rockwood, right? Yeah. So we'll... yeah. Rockwood's near Guelph for people that are in this area. Right. Uh, nice little conservation area. The lake's not too windy. All right. Cool. Thank you. Does anyone else have anything? Quick question about the canoe museum. Does anybody have the latest on when it's opening? I think it's May 11th. May 11th? Okay. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining. I appreciate it. And hope to see you again when we have another guest speaker. Great. Okay. Thanks, okay. Alex. You guys take care. Alex. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, Hi, Rob. Have a good night.